Why did I write this book, Permissionless Innovation? Uh, for 25 years, I've noticed that in each and every technology space that I jump into, and I've been in quite a few of them, um, there seems to be sort of a tension, a, a conflict of visions, if you will, between two different, world, different worldviews about the way technology policy should work, how technology should be governed, or technology ethics. The way I've finally uh, described it and put it in the book, um, you can think of this worldview as, I think, a clash between the permissionless innovation worldview and the, and the permissionless, uh, I'm sorry, the precautionary principle worldview. The permissionless innovation worldview, which obviously, as the title of my book implies, I very much uh, I'm enamored with, uh, basically is the belief that, generally speaking, that new technologies and innovation should be allowed to evolve freely without prior uh, restraint, and that to the extent problems develop, they should be addressed uh, in an ex post fashion uh, with sort of bottom-up tools and remedies. Um, the precautionary principle approach uh, is one that's instead based upon more of a top-down uh, uh, approach that says we need to sort of preempt new forms of innovation and ensure that before these innovators are allowed to run to market uh, or, or release their technologies into the world, that they exercise some constraint and that they receive some sort of a blessing from some body or, or regulatory agency or so on and so forth. Um, so in the sense, you can think of the precautionary principle camp as sort of more of a mother may I kind of approach, the permissionless innovation approach, sort of a nothing ventured, nothing gained approach.